As you know, Imam Ali alayhi salam is really one of the greatest personalities that ever walked this earth besides the Holy Prophet. There is no other human being that equal him in stature other than the Holy Prophet who is above his stature. And Imam Ali alayhi salam's position is as a protector of the messenger. And the verse I started with in Surah Maidah, verse number 55, Allah clarifies who is the Ulil Amri Minkum, which is in Surah An-Nisa, verse 59, Ya Yuladina Amanu, Ati Allah wa Ati Ur Rasul wa Ulil Amri Minkum. O you who believe, obey Allah, obey the Messenger and those who have authority over your affairs. Allah explains the third one by says, Inna ma waliyukum Allah wa Rasulum wa Alladina Amanu. See? Allah clearly says, الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَيُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةَ وَهُمْ رَاكِعُونَ Who is your wali? Allah says, Allah is your wali. He is messenger and those who believe. Allah pluralizes here because the Qur'an has a style. When it wants to elevate one individual, the Qur'an also has a style by which to address one person in plural form. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us who is this important person known as Amir al-Mu'mineen. That in history, in history, there is only one man in history that gave zakat in the state of Furku, and that is Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu was salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues in verse 56. He says, وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولَهُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا You see, whoever takes Allah, the messenger, and those who believe. Here Allah is explaining this wali, simple, one individual in history, waliyukumullah. The wali, that Allah says, your wali, who is also the wali of Allah, that's why we in, in Adhan and Iqama, say, ashhadu an aliyan, waliyullah. People ask, why do you say that? It is from the Quran, that Allah has taken him as his wali. That's the wali here though, the verse is, is talking about guardianship, not friendship. I wish to expose the history of Imam Ali in a very brief fashion for us to feel consoled that the best representative of Allah who protected Islam, what did he go through and how did he live in this world for you and I to use as an example to follow. Imam Ali wasalam, the one who dislodges such personalities, yet he was so humble, so humble, so down to earth that you and I need to follow. i give you a simple example. Imam Ali alayhi salatu wasalam, the reason we love him as our hero, or not only in the material sense, in the spiritual sense, in the leadership sense, that when he goes to the shop, he buys two shirts. He buys a good one and a not so good one, an expensive one and a cheaper one. And he comes home and Qambar, who was his servant in his house, was a poor man. And Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib gives him the good shirt. So Qambar is saying to Imam Ali that you are my master. You are the one who I am serving. Why do you give me the better shirt? He says, because Qambar, you are younger, you are more handsome. Look at the answer of Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib. He says, you are younger than me. You are more handsome than me. He doesn't tell me, you are my slave, I feel sorry for you. You are poor, you are destitute, you know. I need to help you. I need to make you, I need to give you some dignity. No. Imam says, you are young and you are better. Allahu Akbar. No human being other than the Prophet is getting this kind of accolade for his character because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has elevated him. Imam Ali alayhi salam is that kind of an example where he never made a person feel bad. His wisdom was beyond comprehension. When he would answer complex mathematical answers, People were stunned. Even the second caliph, he says, how come you answer so quickly? He's asking the second caliph, what is one, how many are these? He says, two. Imam says, how come you don't waste time in answering this? He says, that's how I see. When you ask me such question, when he says, saluni, saluni, qabla an tafqiduni, ask me, ask me, before you miss me. Why did he say that? Because he has already been endowed with this wisdom. He has been endowed with this knowledge for you and I to follow. But he's just not, he's just not a man of wisdom. He's a man of action. 
I can just see this image of a man who has ruled as a Khalifa for four years and nine months. And in those four years of treachery that the enemy attacked him so much, he spent every second doing good for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every second doing good for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not a second did this man pass by by which he gave his did not which he did not give his soul fi sabilillah. That's why Allah says, follow him. Why was Muawiyah such an enemy of his? Why did Muawiyah prepare this assassination of Imam Ali? People say Imam Ali salam was hit by a Kharaji by the name of Ibn Muljim. Ibn Muljim, the Khawarij were created by Muawiyah. The institution of the Khawarij was created by Muawiyah. Muawiyah created this as a smoke screen to keep Imam Ali busy so that his authority should remain. I'm drawing these stories, brother, for you to understand the state in which our Imam lived in, the difficulty that he lived in, but his love of Allah, his responsibility to protect Islam was so impeccable that he ensured that Islam was not divided. Once Imam Ali was stitching his shoes, there was no more room to stitch. And Salman comes to him and says, Amir al muminin tell me, give me some hidayah. He says, you see this shoe is more valuable to me than that seat, than that khilafah. It's more valuable to me. But I stand by it because Allah commanded me for that. I will protect it because Allah has given me that. It is mine. But it's not because I want power. It's because I need to save you. I need to give justice to you. Who's going to guide you? Who's going to give you justice? This is the power of Imam Ali alayhi salam. So people ask, how come Allah did not mention the name of Imam Ali in this surah? Or in this ayah, for example, inna ma Allah. When he says, walladina amanu. Why not just say, wa amirul mu'minin ali nabi ta'ala. Why don't you mention this name? People ask. It is not in the spirit of the Quran. Look at the wisdom of Allah. Allah doesn't mention a single companion of the Prophet in the entire Quran except one. And his name was Zayd. Who was his adopted son. And only strategically his name is mentioned. Why? All the companions, none of their names are mentioned. Because it's not the style of the Qur'an to be giving us stories with names. The Qur'an has remained silent for all the companions of the Prophet. Do you know why? Subhanallah. Look at the wisdom of the Qur'an. The Qur'an is a book of principles. It's not a book of stories. And if there is a story in it, it's because there's a principle behind it. Otherwise the Qur'an doesn't tell us. Even the Qur'an is silent about how many people were in the cave. Quran in Surah Al-Kaf, they say, you argue, there were five and six as a dog, six and seven as a dog. No, I'm not going to tell you. You say to Allah, why don't you tell me? Because Allah says, it's not important for you. I'll tell you only if it's important. And if numbers are given to you, it's important. You will find out later in time about this number. So Imam Ali's name is not mentioned because you and I have been commanded. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِي ثُمَّ لَمْ يَرْتَابُوا وَجَاهَدُوا بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَأَنفُسِهِمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ The believers are the ones who believe in Allah and His Messenger. Through the Messenger, we get all the regulations. Because Allah in the Qur'an is saying, these things, you will get it from Rasulullah. For the Wali, the Khalifa, the successor, it can be told by nobody but Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Salawat ala Muhammad wa al-Muhammad.